This is Czech cliff diver Michael Navrati. He is about to dive from a platform standing 27 metres above the ocean. It will take him almost three seconds to reach the water. During that time, whilst twisting and turning in the air, he will accelerate to 85 kilometers an hour, or 52 miles an hour, before decelerating to zero again in less than one second, as he plunges into the Atlantic Ocean. This is Red Bull cliff diving, and it's absolutely mental. I've watched cliff diving a bit on TV, but I wanted to see it for myself in the flesh. So I attended round four of the 2021 Red Bull cliff diving season in Downpatrick Head in Ireland, which as the crow flies is only 450 kilometers from me, but I still had to get a flight and then drive for a further four hours just to get there. This place is remote. Watching this in person at the cliff edge blew my mind. This sport is nuts. Cliff diving in its structure is almost identical to Olympic diving. Competitors each perform four dives, which are scored based on difficulty and execution by a group of judges. First place is then awarded to the diver with the highest accumulated score. I asked one of the judges what constitutes a dive with a perfect 10 score. So we can split the dive in, in three big categories, right? So we have the takeoff, then after we have in the air, how the dive looks in the air, and the entry. So we're looking for a strong jump, you know, very powerful, beautiful height, not so far from the platform or the cliff. You need to keep a very good distance. You want the toes pointed, you want the legs super straight, you know, very, very beautiful position. And at, for, of, of course, the entry, as uh, you know, you want no splash. So when they enter the water, no splash, perfect entry. You don't want to see anything. So that's a, that, that's a main goal. The difference from Olympic diving is you're jumping off a cliff. Instead of 10 meters, as is the case with Olympic diving, men jump from a height of 27 meters and women at this venue from 23 meters. In addition to diving from the platform, there are also dives performed directly from the cliff edge. More on that later. Let's talk about the height. 27 meters, almost 90 feet up is a long way. The acceleration when falling is actually almost exactly like a perfect start in a McLaren F1, up to 85 kilometers an hour in about two and a half seconds, and then imagine stopping from that speed in under a second. In a car, you would need big, powerful, modern hydraulic brakes and a seatbelt, but the cliff divers do this in just a pair of speedos. As they plunge through the cold water, their speed decreases rapidly, and they travel a further eight meters under the water just to slow down. To end the dive, the aim is to enter the water as much like a pencil as possible, perfectly straight and streamlined with all your core muscles engaged to keep your arms and legs from spreading out under the force of the water and causing injury. Look at how tense divers are at this part. If the divers mess this part up, there are real consequences. Getting knocked out in the water or even just injured so that you can't swim means big trouble. Notice that you'll never see a cliff diver intentionally enter the water head first like in Olympic diving. On, uh, at the Olympics, they land hand first. They land always on their hand, uh, so, you know, like this. Um, but 20, 27 meters, they're not allowed to. The impact it would be way too strong, uh, so they always land feet first. So this is the main difference uh, between the 10 meter and the high diving. It's, it's actually a rule. You're not allowed to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Instead, they aim to enter the water feet first and to minimize splash as much as possible. Watch this clip of Rihanna Nifland. The splash she creates from that height is astonishing. It's as if you threw a pebble into a puddle. For this effort, all of the judges would award her a perfect 10. The first question I had about the sport upon seeing it with my own eyes is how on earth would you train for this? 
We don't have platform from 27 meters, so the only way that we have for practice our dive is, is divide the dive in three parts. These are the same part that the judges are looking for give the score. Yeah, so we don't actually get a 20 meter or 27 meter spot very often. So we train in the Olympic pool, so 10 meters, and you train half of your dive. So you'll do the first half of the 10 meters or seven meters, and then the last half of the dive. And then usually when we go to a competition, we just kind of put it together. There are just a handful of facilities that have a diving platform that is 25 or 27 meters high. So most of the athletes just have the same tools that you or I would, a 10 meter diving board at their local pool. So to practice a dive that is almost three times that height, athletes must split their dive into three or two parts. Only on the day at the venue do they finally get the opportunity to put it all together for real. And the practice window before competition is tiny, it's a matter of hours. You only get a handful of attempts. In Olympic diving, 10 meters means 10 meters to the millimetre. A diving board in Beijing is exactly the same as in London. In cliff diving, it's 27 metres. Ish. The platform can be as high as 28 or as low as 26. And the cliff edge, well that's just whatever the cliff edge happens to be. The water level is constantly moving up and down with the waves and let's not forget that this whole area is tidal. A lot of the time you might see athletes shouting below to the poorly named divers, let's just call them the safety team. Sometimes they are asking them to make a splash in the water below. This is to aid the cliff divers perception of height. Since height is directly influential on how you'll spin in order to land straight, the divers use sight to guide them. In order to enter the water perfectly straight, the athletes need to time their rotations and the scoring is so harsh, any bending of the legs or deviation from the perfect position to tune that rotation is brutally marked down. Athletes have to perfect their dives in that tiny practice window and adjust for changes in height and conditions. For some of the dives, men dive straight from the cliff edge rather than the platform, falling perilously close to the extremely unforgiving cliff edge and to the rocks below. This is gnarly. No one carved this to dive off, it's just a semi-convenient place to jump from. Walking to it was nuts and the view over the edge was sobering. At Down Patrick Head, we were able to see Carlo Jimeno perform the first ever handstand dive from the cliff edge in competition. I could barely watch. Like, what if he just went over a little bit too much? I asked one of the Red Bull team, how do they get back to the top? So they put me in a tiny dinghy and said, go have a look for yourself. As that little boat drove round the cliff, I saw, tethered to the cliff face was a number of aluminium ladders and you could see these tiny little ants donning garish speedos ascending the cliff, most of them barefoot. It was arguably more intense than the dives themselves. And I couldn't help but notice just how shredded everyone was. Everyone was just rocking this eight pack with veins popping out everywhere. There was probably a pound of body fat across the whole roster of divers. And it only makes sense why you need to be in that shape when you watch a dive in slow motion. To generate that rotation, that height off the board, to handstand on the bare rocks, you have to be obscenely strong. For context, this position here is called a pike. Just stand up right now and try doing that. I spent two days soaking in this sport and this culture, observing the athletes and the event. And yes, it's mental, some would even say reckless. This fringe sport combines insanity with finesse and power and control in a way that no other discipline does. And these divers are elite athletes performing at the bleeding edge. And I, I got all that from it. But what I really walked away with was an insight into the vibe of the sport. This is high level, high stakes, high competition stuff. The people here are here to win, but the atmosphere amongst the divers is one of camaraderie. Divers would climb up those rickety ladders together, don their robe and cheer the next diver as he proceeds to beat them in competition. They're thrilled by a perfect dive, a new technique or risk. This tiny group of elites cheer one another on. At some points, it felt like we were just watching a bunch of mates. Think of any other sports competition where competitors hang out like this afterwards. Madrid and Barcelona might be professional, but they aren't chums chilling in a hot tub together. 
Federer and Djokovic respect one another, but they don't cheer each other on at the sidelines. Cliff divers are a bizarre group of ultra fit, ultra dedicated adrenaline junkies who travel the world together as mates jumping off cliffs. It's fantastic. This week's sponsor is Display. I got eight prints this time. I've already got my favorite movies on the wall. Now I got all of the planets, all of them, not even one dwarf planet missing. These are real photographs from spacecraft printed on metal. So you get this really flush, clean look when mounted on the wall. And the printing process, I'm not sure how it works, but you get these really vivid colors and very sharp images. It's really amazing. The best bit, however, is mounting to the wall. You stick on the sticky pad, throw on the disc plates, bam, that's it done. And if you want to move it, that pad just comes off and doesn't mark your wall so you can move it around. Piece of cake. And disc plate is a pretty cool company too. For every disc plate they sell, they plant a tree in an area that needs it most. And these prints are real license prints, no knockoffs here. If you browse disc plate, you'll see that there are artists on here. So when you buy some of their work, they get paid, which is how it should be. And there are tons of different genres, everything you could imagine, like the Halo or the Marvel stuff or nature or sport, whatever you like. These are perfect for a gift and they're doing a Black Friday sale. Savings start at 34% and if you buy five or more, you get 42% off. Uh, that offer ends on December 5th, so hurry, go get it in time for Christmas. Thank you very much to Display for sponsoring this video and thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Peace.